What's going on everybody? It is Bush Fishing. Today it's a different style of video. If you guys are new here, my name is Bush Fishing. I make primarily fishing videos, but I do do some motor stuff and today we're gonna be working on a three horse Jiffy auger. This is my friend Ranchy's auger and he's ran it for a couple years but never cleaned the carb, never drained the gas, so we're having a couple problems with it. It won't run. I'll play some clips of that right now. Once you go full throttle and put it into the ice, it starts to bog down and it actually dies and you have to run it full choke for it to work. So we're going to fix that today by cleaning the carburetor. Now I've watched a lot of videos around this, but nobody really makes a good video. So this one's hopefully going to be that. It's going to be very in-depth and I'm going to show you every step of the way. To make sure you get your carburetor clean and you get your auger working for the ice. So without further ado, let's start getting set up and then we'll get into cleaning this. But before that, if you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe. It'll help me a lot. And if you like anything fishing related, boat motors, anything like that, this channel's for you. So let's get started. Okay, so here's our beautiful Jiffy. Now, if you guys are completely new, this is your carburetor right here. So basically, all this linkage looks pretty confusing. You don't think that you're going to be able to like remember how to put it all back together. Bring you guys over here. If you look at my finger right there, there's a spring. That spring goes into the plate that it's touching now. I already took this off, I'll tell you guys the truth. <laughs> and I tried to put it back on, but we're gonna have to put it on before we put the carburetor back on. But your first step is to get a long nose pliers, grab this spring right there, grab this spring right here, and take it out of that. And once you've done that, then you're ready to disconnect the carburetor. So, here is our choke, we'll move that out of the way. There's one nut here, and one nut right here on the other side. Now, 11 millimeter. That's what we're gonna need, so let's get those off. Okay, I've got you guys right on the bolt. So there's two of these, one on each side. It's the only thing that's holding the carburetor on. So we're gonna start by getting these out. Just loosen them up. You should be able to get them with your finger. Okay, there's one, let's move to the other side. You guys should be able to see this now, same thing. 11 millimeters, loosen her up, and you should be able to get her out. Now make sure you're working somewhere so if this falls out you can find it easily, because they are kind of hard, but put that in our bucket, we should be good to take it out. Okay, so real quick, right up here is where the fuel comes in from the fuel tank, and then right below it is the drainage. So all we're gonna do is pull this hose clamp back, we're gonna grab it with our needle nose pliers, twist it a little bit, and this one should come out. Now, make sure to drain your gas tank before. Next, all we have to do is the drainage from the carburetor, that one comes out easy. Now we're good to go to take the carburetor out. So all we're gonna do, now that you have the spring out, you just gotta wobble it a little bit, angle it up towards the gas tank, pull straight down, make sure nothing's sticking, and our carburetor is out. Okay, now that we have our carburetor off, we can take a better look at it. This is for your throttle. Right over here, this is your choke. And in your intake, right here, there's this little piece of metal. Now, this is designed to face upward, so when you're drilling, you don't suck in any water, you don't suck in any snow or ice. So, we're gonna start by taking this off. Now, I will say, you're gonna need some star bits. Personally, I didn't even have any of these. So, I had to go to my grandpa, and luckily he had some, but... You're gonna need some star bits. I have no idea why whoever designed this decided to use star bits, but so be it. So, two screws on here. Use your nice bendy screwdriver. Get those guys out. Here's one, and an important thing, I always use one of these. You don't have to have some expensive magnetic parts tray. You can just use the bottom of a soda. Put them in there, you don't lose anything. Let's do the other side. Here's another one, and here we have it. So all this does is it makes the air suck from above rather than below, so you're not sucking in water. Important, there's a little gasket on the other side of it. Don't lose that, should be pretty stuck on there. If it looks too worn, you might have to replace it. This one I'm not going to. Okay, so now you can see better. Here's your choke. When it's closed, it's forcing more fuel in and cutting off the air, and when it's open, it's normal, it's letting air in. So the next step, on the bottom here, we have our fuel bowl. Even though there's no actual bowl in here, it's just a little spring. We are gonna take this off because there's a diaphragm in it and we're gonna be soaking it and we don't want that diaphragm to take a crap. So I'm gonna find a different star bit that hopefully fits one of these. Hell yeah, this one's perfect, so we finally got one. Next step, we're gonna take off all four of these screws. Here's one, here's two, 
three, four. Okay, so once you have all the screws off, you're gonna take, you probably use a regular razor blade, I'm using a hook blade. You're gonna slide it under the diaphragm, not too far, and just pry up. And it should come out pretty easily. There's gonna be some gas in there, so watch out. As you guys can see, my hands are probably a little bit wet. But if you look down here, there's no actual float like a regular like bolt carburetor or anything has. It's just a little spring. So this thing gets pushed down, and then once there's no gas in it, it'll open up. It'll let gas in, so it'll fill up, and then it'll close off again so no more gas gets through. That way you're not flooding. Even though this looks pretty good, the float chamber wasn't really anything dirty, I am gonna take the jets out because I think that's where the problem is. Not really the low speed jet, but definitely the high speed jet because it would bog down. So, if you look here, on your left, that is your low speed. On your right, that's gonna be your high speed. Now, before we take those out, we're gonna turn them in, in order of half turns, and we're gonna remember that number because I already adjusted this once, so I wanna make sure that it comes back to that set adjustment. Half and then half of a half, so three quarters. <laughs> okay, so now that we have those recorded, we're just gonna take them both all the way out. This is pretty important. On the inside of here, there's little washers, little like gold washers that look like this. You're gonna wanna make sure you don't leave those in when you soak it in the tank. So there we go. So now that we have all of like the plasticky parts out and everything that's gonna stop carb cleaner from getting in every single orifice, now I'm gonna go grab the tank. We're gonna plop this baby in here. You don't have to worry about leaving or taking this stuff off. It's not plastic, it's metal. So we're gonna put this whole thing in there. It's gonna get in every little nook and cranny and it's gonna clean everything out. Then once we get it out, that's when we're gonna do like the exterior brushing. I'm gonna take like an old toothbrush to the outside, make it all pretty. And then I'm gonna take wire and I'm gonna put it through every little hole. I'm gonna spray it all with carb cleaner through everything. And then I'm gonna take compressed air, clean it all out. And then we're gonna put it back in. But for now, let me grab my tank. Okay, here's our tank of carb cleaner. This thing's cleaned a few of them. She's still good. Dry this baby off. Try not to spill it everywhere. Now I'm gonna put everything in this handy dandy tray. So here's our entire carburetor. That baby's going in. And that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna put the bowl in it because the diaphragm's stuck to it and I don't wanna rip it. So we're gonna drop this baby in there. Oh yeah, some gunk just came out. Okay, we're gonna drop that down. Seal her up. Normally I would let it sit for a day, maybe two days, but for this one, since it's not completely terrible and the stuff that I'm really gonna have to clean is like inside of it, like all the orifice plugs, stuff like that, I'm gonna leave this for one to two hours, get it out, blow everything, and I'll show you guys that, and then we'll put her back on. We'll do our test and adjust it, and we should be good to go. So I'll see you guys once we're taking this baby out. One hour later. Okie doke everybody, it's getting cold and I'm starting to lose a little bit of light, but we should be at least good enough now for everything to be loosened up. It's only been in for a little over an hour. So we're gonna get this off. I'm gonna try and not be stupid about this and get it everywhere. Oh yeah, here she is. You know, I want to make sure to open up all the butterflies and let everything flow out. Okay, we should be good enough right there. Okay, now that we have the carb out, I just took a toothbrush to the outside to make it look prettier, but the important places to get it in is where the fuel goes in, right in this hole, in the bottom of this where the fuel comes out, quote unquote, and then the two holes here that we took the screws out for the low speed jet and the high speed jet which are actually in here we're gonna spray that we're gonna spray in all the holes in the bottom of the float with the float bowl got our carb cleaner here we're just gonna start spraying in all those holes and i'm gonna do it over this oil pan so i don't get crap everywhere pretty much any hole you find just spray it out i can already see in the bottom of this bowl the crap that just came out there's some gunk in it that's what we're trying to remove all that Okay, so that side's done. Now I'm just gonna spray in where the fuel comes out of the bottom of the bowl. Okay, I can see it coming out of the diaphragm, so that should be good. That shake off. Okay, the next step. <sighs> Holy crap. <gasps> we're just gonna take, someone's calling me. Hello? Okie dokie, we're back. 
So now we're just going to take the compressed air, we're going to go through all those holes. I found out the gas wasn't going through on the fuel in. There's a little needle inside here, right above my finger. Right in there, that's where you need to hold down with like your fingernail, something to let it through. Again, that's how the float works. So I'm just going to go through. We're going to blow everything and hopefully I don't get any in my eye. Okay, so now that that's all done, we're gonna dump out all of our screws and stuff. We're gonna take these four, which are for the float bowl. Now, first step in putting it back together, we've got our float bowl there. We've got the cap for it. All we're gonna do is put it back on. Now, luckily I remember this. This is the fuel in hose. The fuel out goes just on an angle. If you're, holy crap, I did a good job cleaning that out. If you're facing away from this, it's to the left, one turn. All we're gonna do is line them up. We're just gonna get these started and then we'll take again that star bit, screw them all in. Now all I'm doing is just getting them fairly tight and then I'm gonna go opposite corner, opposite corner, opposite corner. And then once they're all pretty much snug, that's when I'm gonna go in and really torque them down. Important thing is you don't wanna go too tight because then you might just deform the gasket and then it's not gonna work. We're just gonna snug them all up. And the opposite corners is important so you get an even pressure. Okay, the next step is we're gonna take our needles. These are the high and low speed needles. Now, before we put them in, we gotta make sure there's this little O-ring on them. Not even like an O-ring, it's a little piece of metal. Hopefully you guys can see that on there. Make sure, shit. <laughs> actually found it. So make sure you have that O-ring. Now, it doesn't really matter which one was which. They're pretty much exact same screws. Just get it started and then, an important thing, you want to put it in until it gets tight, but you don't want to force it in because that'll bend the point on it and then it won't really work the same. So all we're going to do, get it in there. Once you start to feel it get tight, stop. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other side. That little washer over the end of it. Twice now I did that. Washers in my hand. Try that again, put it in the other side. Now just tighten this one the same way till it gets finger tight, like this. So it's kind of tight, and then don't force it anymore. Now, before we do our adjustments and remembering what I had there, I'm gonna put this end. This is the end for the air intake, so that it doesn't suck water. Now, your float bowl is always gonna be at the bottom, so we're gonna have this facing upwards. If you guys see, that's the float on the bottom. We're gonna put this in facing upwards, so sucking air from above. These are two really small screws, again, with the star bit. Put these in, snug them up. Torquing these isn't that important. It's just a little cover. There we go. Here's our reassembled carburetor. Looks a lot prettier than it did before. Got everything scrubbed up now. Important, these are still in. I'm not gonna take these out and adjust them until it's on the carburetor. So the next step is to put it back on. I'm gonna move you guys and let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you guys in so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Here, this fuel hose, this is for the gas in, straight from the gas tank. This one on the bottom is going back in, this is from the drainage plug. Now, as you can see, there's a little gasket on here. I left this gasket on there for a reason, so I didn't lose it. There's two studs here, that's where the carburetor mounts to, but before we do that, this spring, this is the only linkage that we disconnected. It's this spring right here. So we're gonna hook this one up before we attach the carburetor. Okay, so on top here, this is your throttle body. If you guys look close, there's two holes right there. The hole farther away from the actual main engine, that's where you're gonna put the spring in. I don't know if there's different settings, but that's what this one was set for, so that's how I'm gonna put it back. So we're gonna grab our spring. Hopefully you guys can see this. Okay, I'm gonna get you guys off the tripod. That was much harder than I anticipated. This spring has to be in there, just like I said. Okay, we finally got this thing back together. Now the next step is going to be putting those two bolts in here and here on the other side, just like how we took it off. Got to hook it up, throw some gas in it, and then we'll test her out. Okay, both sides are fully snugged up. Now all that's left is, I have a cramp in my hip. This is the fuel in from the gas tank. We're going to take this and put it right on the nozzle. Push that baby in, I'm gonna grab the pliers, open this hose clamp, push it all the way on so it doesn't come out. Next we have this very small hose, that's just the drainage. Same thing, just putting it on over this opening. Not very sure why that's tight, but now we're good to go. Throttle works, pulls it wide open. So the last step is we're gonna do our adjustments and then we're gonna run her. Okay, I'm priming it a little bit. 
definitely was empty still. Holy crap. It's the next day, it's really cold and windy. Yesterday I ran it for a little bit. The idle was super rough, but then it did pretty good high speed. I just need to do those adjustments, so right off the bat, I'm gonna loosen the idle screw a little bit. I'm just gonna play with it until it sounds right. What's going on everybody? It is Bushfish and I'm currently in a hotel in Chicago. We're on our way to go marlin fishing for a week, but I just finished up this video. You guys are going to be seeing it midweek while I'm in Mexico. Hopefully I'll have a fish by then, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Gave the auger back to Ratchy. We ran it for a little bit and it worked perfectly. The thing ripped. I just had to do the adjustment. I put up earlier the proper adjustments. It's three and a quarter out for the low speed and then one and a quarter out for the high speed and that worked pretty good the high speed was just off by a little bit worked on that she ran great so hopefully you guys enjoyed there's going to be a few more videos like this while the season's still closed and then hopefully when i get new outboard but i'll see you guys in the next one